Crushers, intergalactic hired help for any and all ethical jobs needed. In the year 2160, one of the star groups of Crushers is led by the heroic Joe and accompanied by his loyal team, Alfin, Ricky, Talos, and Dongo. Together, they are given assignments of any and all kinds and using their brains and brawn, work hard to get the mission done, no matter what troubles stand in their way. Two years before he would create the landmark sci-fi action series Dirty Pair, Haruka Takachiho would take his experiences at science fiction working on both Macross and space battleship Yamato to create Crusher Joe, a novel series that would continue until 2005, only recently being revamped as a manga in 2017 under the title of Crusher Joe Rebirth. Being a longtime fan of space operas and the golden age of science fiction, the era of writers like John W. Campbell and A. E. Van Fucht Takachiho would base his science fiction around sprawling epics that built up how the universes worked. Interestingly enough, the original Star Wars would release in 1977, which would not only help get the sci-fi boom of anime going, but would also only be a few months before the release of the first Crusher Joe novel. The OVAs The Ice Prison and The Ultimate Weapon Ash serve as original stories and can be considered sequels to the 1983 movie. The first tells the story of the team needing to save a group of workers trapped in an icy meteor, and the other has the team attempting to rescue a major on a distant planet with the knowledge and means of detonating a weapon of mass destruction, making her the target of anyone with a desire to harness it. One of the strongest parts of both OVAs is how much it displays the character interaction. Each member of the Crusher crew plays off of each other extremely well, giving the series an immediate charm. Particularly, watching the OVAs in order means the viewer's first introduction to them is the team on vacation providing an excellent crash course of their personalities in a low-stress environment. You quickly are shown Joe's cool-headedness, Alfin's spunkiness, Ricky's goofiness, and Talos' grumpiness. From that point forward, the story shows off the team in action through their missions. While their display of skill levels is more reserved for Joe than any other member, it is made abundantly clear that the team is loyal to one another and rely on each other no matter what the situation. The character dynamics actually reminded me quite a bit of Cowboy Bebop, being a ragtag group of hired guns. In fact, considering how all three were Sunrise Productions, it wouldn't surprise me if Bebop and Outlaw Star both took serious inspiration from this series. A lot of subtle elements in how the universe works could easily be considered prototypical of the world shown in either of the later shows. Given that Takashiho was a student of social science, it makes sense that the plots of his stories would be very socially conscious. While corrupt politicians or the dangers of WMDs are pretty run-of-the-mill plots, especially for science fiction, what's interesting is Crusher Joe actually takes the time to examine exactly why certain events are occurring, and why some people have different goals. What's interesting in the case of the Ice Prison, the actual plot of getting the workers out is almost supplemental to the rest of the story, which involves warring states and political gain during an election. It should be mentioned that Takachiho is not actually credited with writing either of the OVAs, but considering he had a hand in creating Studio New, which was one half of the production team behind it, it's a safe bet to say he had his hand in the development of the story. Moving on to the animation, for both OVAs it was wonderfully dynamic, with both inspired cinematography and thrilling battle scenes. While there may be a reused shot once or twice, most of the battle scenes have a great sense of scope and truly make the viewer feel engrossed. Something else to consider is that the two OVAs have radically different environments, which helps make them stand out from one another. The Ice Prison is pretty much exactly what it says in the title. Most of the OVA is set around an icy environment with machinery sprinkled about, complemented by the rest of the OVA taking place mostly in the cold vastness of space. With the story cleverly starting on a Tahiti-like vacation planet, the exact opposite of where the rest of the story would be placed. The ultimate weapon Ash, however, takes place on a lush planet filled with plant life, practically untouched by humankind, making it both ironic and perfect as the place where the characters would fight over control for such a powerful, singular, yet still tiny piece of technology. The designs of the characters also have a great balance of the typical 80s look of the time, without being overly designed to where it all feels dated. Each one stands out from the other. Even the more incidental characters have just enough personality 
to make their look memorable. Their looks complement their personalities as well, especially in the case of the Crusher crew. Joe's design could be considered a generic anime man look, but everyone else is so radically different that even he can stand out. There's also a refreshing amount of nuance throughout the two OVAs, both with subtle character moments and plot points. A remarkably subtle moment is the use of a particular code word in the final weapon Ash, which shows off how much thought was put into the story. In spite of the simplicity of both narratives, they both are willing to explore deeper themes than what was first shown on the surface, giving the viewers something strong that they can sink their teeth into, rather than just another enjoyable sci-fi anime. For the pros, to summarize what I've been saying, it's all around just deeper than you think a fun sci-fi adventure would be. It's not groundbreaking in its writing, but it's got just enough to impress anyone not expecting that much. It's just extremely beautiful to look at. Being at the height of anime production, it is a prime example of how great an anime can look if the passion and talent is there. And the music is excellent. It goes for a more traditional orchestra, which once again adds a layer of timelessness to the whole production. For the cons, no character has any sort of arc of any kind. This is more a subjective con than anything, but don't go into these OVAs expecting any kind of deep character study. And as mentioned before, there is a moment or two of reused footage. It's a blink and you miss it moment, but it does create a blemish on an otherwise excellently executed anime. Recommended watch? Personally, this is the kind of 80s anime I live for. Fun, exciting, and well-rounded narrative. On the surface, it looks like something forgettable, but once you really sink your teeth into it, you see the sense of quality it has to offer. If you're in the same camp as me, you'll find plenty of enjoyment out of the two OVAs. If you're not so much into 80s anime, you might actually still find this pretty enjoyable. Because, while it's clear it's from the era that it is, it's smart and polished enough that it doesn't feel like it deserves to be left behind. The only way I would say you wouldn't be interested if this is just not your kind of anime. Otherwise, you should be in for a treat. Crusher Joe the Ice Prison and the Ultimate Weapon Ash are currently licensed by Discotech Media, and you can find it and other anime like it, such as Dirty Pair or Space Adventure Cobra, at Discotech, Nozomi Entertainment, Funimation, and Sentai Filmworks. Stay classic.